Hello and welcome to the second video in our vector series. In this video we're going to carry on from the introduction that we did last time and have a look at the details of how you put this thing together and there are lots of bits of pieces and cables that come at the start of the box so I'm going to show you how to pop it all together. Again all of the detail that we're going to go through in this video series is absolutely covered as part of the manual so I'd heartily recommend if you haven't already looked at the manual go and download that from the website. I'll put a link in the description and have a look through it because the manual has far more information than we're able to cover in these videos. And I'm putting these videos together assuming that we're gonna pop this into a fixed wing model and it also supports things like multi-rotors too. So if you're gonna use a multi-rotor, all the basic steps that we're covering in this video are still relevant, but you'll deviate slightly as you start to connect later on. You won't be plugging in servos and those kind of things. You'll actually be plugging in speed controllers for the motors out on the arms. So in this video, the first thing we'll talk about then is how you plug all the pieces together. Then we'll have a look at how you configure the radio. I'll take you through what I've done here on my FR Sky Tiranas for the initial configuration. The settings are pretty standard. You just need the first four channels, the standard channels ready for the main controls. Then ideally you need a couple of switches assigned to mode switches. And then finally you need the game control set up. Now, if you really want to, you can just get away with the initial configuration, four main controls, throttle, rudder, elevator, aileron, and one mode switch as well. But I'm trying to set it up all in one go so I can just assign those pieces as we go through and we're away. Now you can set up the entire thing that we're about to do through the graphical user interface, through the on-screen display. That's part of the power of the system, but I'm doing it through the computer for a couple of reasons in this video. First of all, until you've done the RC calibration so that the system knows how your radio behaves, then navigating the on-screen menus on the FPV side of the system can be a bit tricky because the channels might be reversed. And secondly, it's slightly clearer for me to do screen grabs and uh, shots of the stuff that I'm doing on the computer rather than trying to get it to focus on a fuzzy FPV screen. Last thing I'll mention is in the radio setup, the only thing I haven't shown in there is the fact that I've set the fail safe for the radio to be no pulses. So what's going to happen is that if there's a problem with the connection from the receiver to the radio, the S bus connection is going to put out no pulses at all. And that's a very quick and easy way to make sure that when the failsafe happens, the vector can absolutely see it and take appropriate action. And later on, we'll set that up so that it does things like return to home. Let's have a look at how you put all these bits together. Everything in front of you, with the exception of the FPV kit in the top right hand corner and the receiver, comes in the kit. So all the cables and everything is here and it's just a case of plugging it together. So these are the three things that were kind of in the box when I originally opened it up along with these cables too. Now the first thing to do is connect up the power unit to the vector itself. Now the power unit we've had a look at before, it's very clear which side you're going to plug the battery into and which side is going to plug into your ESC. That's normally where you would historically have plugged the battery into. So this is going to sit in the middle and provide the 12 volts and the 5 volts for the entire system. So all you have to do is find this cable that looks like this and plug it into this connector at the bottom and it'll only go one way it's completely coded and it will kind of snap into place. Now the nice thing about this system is everything is absolutely labelled. And the way this works is that you have three JST connectors here. These two red ones are going to provide us with a 12 volt supply and that white one there is a 5 volt supply and we can decide what we want to plug into which to run our camera and microphone FPV output and our video and transmitter because we're going to plug those into those later on but at the moment we're just going to choose the voltages that we're interested in. Now I like running my cameras at 5 volts so I'm just going to plug the 5 volt into there. There we go that's done and I'm going to plug one of the 12 volts into the video transmitter because I tend to run my video transmitters on 12 volts. So with that made up, that is all of the voltage selection done and we're ready for that piece. Now that piece is ready, we can plug it into the video input, which is here. Again, it's all coded, so it'll only go in one way. Once that's plugged in, make sure it's completely home because if it isn't, it won't power the unit. This will now power 
the vector itself and we've also got the connections ready along with the bits and pieces for the camera and the video transmitter too. Now the really nice thing about the GPS and mag is that you only have one connection. So where it says bus here on the GPS, you get this cable in, you plug it into the bus on the GPS and you plug it onto the bus connector here on the vector. And again, only goes one way. There we go, GPS all done. It's that easy. You do want to make sure that the GPS is connected to the vector when we do the firmware flashing. That way, if there's any firmware updates or any changes for the GPS unit itself, you'll get those too. The cool thing is, is the way the bus system works on the Eagle Tree, is if we look at things like this alerter, it always has two bus connections and you get an extra cable. So the way this would work is, we could connect this additional cable to the output, uh, the bus output on the GPS and mag, and plug it into this alerter. Then the other bus could go to the pitot tube or whatever we have to use. So it's really, really easy to set up. We don't have to mess around with anything. Now we need to set up the receiver. Again, all of the control inputs are all labeled. So actually plugging them into your receiver is going to be a piece of cake. Now I'm actually going to use SBUS for this. This plugs into the receiver in. Again, it only goes one way round. So plug that in. There we go. And I'm going to use the three pin cable that's called Aileron. That has the power ground and also the signal cable and I'm going to use an, an X8R for this part of the video. I'm just going to plug that into the S bus out on there and then all the rest are not going to be used. So if we were going to use PWM then we'd of course plug all the rest of these into the corresponding output on the receiver but we're going to use S bus just because it's really straightforward and easy. So we're getting close. Next couple of things we need to do is plug the camera into the camera output. Again, observing polarity, so I want to make sure that the ground wire is to ground, power is to power, which is going to be plus five volts, because we've already selected that, and video into video. That's the camera done. And the video transmitter, uh, this one I've jerry-rigged a little bit here, because what I've done is I've connected the video and ground on from the pin into this connector here. This is uh, an Immersion RC uh, transmitter. It's quite old now and this is my 12 volts. I'm just gonna plug that into the battery connector like that, and then that's gonna work. Most systems these days will have this kind of connector on as well that you can use, so let me just plug the cable into your video transmitter out. There we go, that bit's done too. So that is the FPV system installed. The last thing we need to do because this radio receiver isn't going to be powered from the vector, that power system from this little box here is just designed to run all of these components on this side of the table in front of us. The nice thing is, is that there is a separate power system, well it's actually a couple, but we'll talk about that in the later video, where the outputs and the receiver are all run off a separate 5 volt supply. And that means that if we want to run servos on different voltages, that's not a problem. Now, for the setup, all I'm going to do is I've just got a battery illuminated circuit here. Uh, normally, the 5 volts that you need will be provided as you plug the throttle channel in from your electronic speed controller in the plane itself. But we are just going to plug a separate one in here for the purposes of testing. So I'm going to plug this battery illuminated circuit into the ESC connector and I'm going to plug the other side just in the receiver just to power it. So there we are, we're all together. So let me show you how I've configured the model on my Tiranas in preparation for connecting it up and going through the radio calibration and making sure that everything's working okay. Now what I'll do is I'll actually save the model that I'm using at this point in the video down in the description. Uh, so if you're using a Tiranas radio, you can go and have a look. But all of the tips and tricks about how you set up this kind of radio are actually covered in the OpenTX Mixing School and the Tiranas and also things like the QX7 series as well. So I'm going to do a whistle-stop tour here to show you how I've got it set up. I'll also make that file available to download if you want to use it. But I'd strongly recommend if you're not familiar with the radio and some of the things that I'm doing here don't make sense, 
go and have a look at that series. It will explain what I'm doing in a lot of detail. Now, again, all of this is covered in the manual for the vector, but really what we're looking for are the first four channels to be the main controls. That's going to be throttle, rudder, elevator and aileron, uh, which this is a mode 2 radio, but if you're using a different mode, then the controls will be in a different position. I need to have two three position switches or one three position, one two position set up so I can have it as my initial flight modes. So I can choose between three flight modes. I'm going to have another switch set up so I can have another set of three flight modes, or they're called sub modes, but we'll cover that later in the series. And I'm also configured one of my rotating knobs up here to be the gain control which is going to be very handy to refine the gain as we get to fly but that won't be for a couple of videos yet so let me just power the radio on Welcome to Tyrannus. and this is a very simple model at this point I haven't done anything particularly fancy all I've done is set up the channels so let me just go all the way through here uh, and show you the outputs so the way we have it set up in fact, let me just zoom in for a second and I'll show this in a slightly easier way. So first of all, let me give you a very quick rundown of the inputs. I've got throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, switch SE is set for my mode switch, switch B is set for my mode 2 or my sub mode switch, and then the last one, if I just tilt it, you might be able to read it a bit better, there we go, S1 is set as my tune. If I go into the page, this is how they're all set for the outputs, which I would recommend doing it this way because it kind of matches up with how the vector is expecting to see them. And doing it this way, you could also potentially do the setup through the on-screen display. The challenge is, until you've done the radio calibration, the up and down uh, movement of the controls which you need to use to navigate around the on-screen display might be backwards. So I'd always recommend go and connect it up to your PC and get the RC calibration done first and then for everything else you can either do it through the on-screen display or you can carry on and use the graphical user interface. Let's go and plug the vector into the computer with all those connections that we've just had a look at and fire up the graphical user interface and the first thing it should do is actually tell us that the firmware update is needed and we can do that first then do the radio calibration. Now as we talked about in the first video in the series, you can download the graphical user interface and play with it without having the vector installed. So I'd always recommend if you're ordering your vector, get hold of the graphical user interface and get used to navigating around it and looking where everything is. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to download the graphical user interface and the installation, it's a Windows only application unfortunately, but the installation only takes about 30 seconds. The other useful link that I'll talk about, and I'll put in the description as well, is this one here that talks about all of the firmware updates and versions and revision history for the firmware for the vector and the micro vector. This is particularly handy as the vector's been around for quite a few years now and the software has changed dramatically over that time. So if you are a pilot that's watching this series that's maybe had a vector and you've had it for a little while and I'm showing you something that you haven't seen on your particular vector this is a great place to go and have a look and find out when that feature that you're looking at came out and what version you have to update to but I'd always recommend you update to the latest and greatest anyway and because this is the first time that we've plugged our vector into a PC it's going to tell us that a firmware update is needed and we're going to absolutely let it do that. Again, make sure you have a GPS and mag plugged into your vector when you do this and that any firmware changes needed for that GPS unit will happen at the same time. So let's go onto the computer and I'll show you what it looks like. So initially I'm just going to start recording on a blank bit of the screen and I'm going to start the vector graphical user interface and we'll have it here in the top left hand corner. In the lower right hand corner that'll give me space to have the radio and you can see here immediate tells me an update is needed so I'm going to click the update button in the middle and then off it goes. We don't have to click anything else once you've clicked that little button it'll start the update and the update took about a minute and a minute and a half so I won't make you sit through all of this I'll fast forward to the bit where it tells me it's complete and there we are it's done it was that quick
So now we've got the firmware done, it's going to connect, and here we can see the very first view of the vector. So although the firmware is on here, we haven't got any settings, so the first thing we're going to do is configure the airframe. We're going to click apply. It's going to start giving us a few warnings, asking us to confirm it later on, and that's great. You should never start plugging things into the outputs of your vector until you have selected the airframe, because if you try and plug speed controllers into outputs dedicated for servos and vice versa, nasty things will happen. So I am expecting it'll ask me to confirm that next time, but that's fine. Once we've got that done, the next thing I need to do then is go through the RC calibration as the last part of this particular video. So I am going to put the radio in the lower right hand corner. Let me just move all of this mess of electronics out the way that we put together and bring the radio in. And what we'll do is we'll go through the process. I won't shortcut anything here. I'll show you each individual step so you can see how it's gonna work. And what's gonna happen is there's going to be prompts on the screen. I'm just gonna answer everything here and say how I've got it connected. So obviously we're SBUS. And then what we're gonna do is follow each of the instructions on screen and click next each time. And it's going to look like it hasn't worked, but actually what it's doing is it's learning as we go through each individual piece exactly which channel is which and how those channels are organized. And hopefully with the way that we've set up the Tyrannus radio, as we've looked at just now, it should be a piece of cake. So I need to put the mode switch in a different position. Uh, initially I started to flick it here thinking that once it identified the switch it was going to work that way. That's not how this works. You just put it into another position from the one you started the wizard in and then click next and it will assign it. And what you'll probably notice as I'm going through here, moving each of the controls to a different position so that the vector can identify which of the channels in the SBUS connection is changing as it tells me to move each of the controls in turn, you'll see the channels being populated. And hopefully you'll see that the way that I had the channels set up is being reflected in the channel order. So throttle is channel one, aileron is channel two, etc., etc. Now. It doesn't matter what order you have the first four channels on your radio, this process will allow the vector to figure that out. The only thing you have to do, I'd suggest, is have your fifth channel as a mode switch that ideally has a two or three position switch on it, and then you can get through this whole thing successfully. Again, I've gone the whole hog. We have two mode switches set up here, and we also have the gain knob set too, and that should give me everything. Now it's asking me to turn the radio off here because what it's actually doing is trying to figure out what the fail safe looks like. Now I've got my S bus set to no pulses so that should be easy for the vector to figure out what a problem looks and feels like when the radio is disconnected. And now it's gonna ask me to go through some of the process again, moving the aileron stick to the left for example, clicking next, then moving each control in turn just confirming for the vector exactly which way all the controls are set on which channel, but also the direction of each of the channels as well. This part of the setup, it's asking us to do a couple of things with the throttle. So what is 50% throttle or kind of cruising throttle and what is kind of a high or climbing throttle. We can change these later on, but you can guess them just for now. And again, all we're doing is following all of the instructions on the screen. And when that's finished, you'll see that there's green bits and pieces around the failsafe and also the RC calibration. So now we have that set up and we have the frame type set up, we can go to the next video where we can look at how we can install this into a frame, look at some more advanced connections and start plugging things like servos and the speed controller for the motor on the plane into the vector. So join me for that next video where we'll actually start sticking things inside a fixed wing chassis. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organized into easy to use playlists, so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject, we organize all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. 
If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.